very good morning students welcome to my channel and this is regarding the first chapter python revision tool from the class 12 according to the cbsc syllabus so i am just starting with the first chapter python revision 2 from the sumita rura so the very first topic is uh, tokens so what do you mean by tokens so the smallest individual unit in a program is known as a token. So the smallest individual unit means which cannot be broken further. So that is known as a tokens. So in a Python, we have these five types of the tokens. The very first is a keyword. In second is identifier, literals, operators, and punctuators. So one by one, we will discuss all these points. So the very first is a keyword. What is a keyword now? A keyword is a special word which have some special meaning or it is reserved by the programming language. What does it mean? It means a, a word which cannot be used as a name for any other variable or it, it is a reserved by the programming language or you can say that you cannot be used as a name of the identifier. It has a special meaning in our Python language. For example, none, true, false. All these are the keywords which cannot be used by you as a name. While. So you just learn the simple names which are you are familiar with. Second is the identifier. So what are the identifiers? So identifiers are what these are the names given to the different part of the program. Means when you want to put a name on any variable, if you want uh, to write A is equal to five. So A is what that is a variable. So identifiers are what these are the names given to any variable or any function or any list or any dictionary. Means the name itself is known as a identifier. So in Python, we have variety of rules to for the naming rules. We have a variety. So very first rule, it must only be a known keyword word. For example, you cannot write as while is equal to file because while is a keyword and you can uh, you cannot put as a name. So that is a invalid. It must it made up of only letters numbers and underscore so you can combine the name with the letters numbers Me means it is alphanumeric and you can add with the help of underscore so only one special symbol added over there that is the underscore only no other symbol is permitted there and variables cannot begin with the number so if you start with the number that is the wrong thing so there is the example of a valid identifiers and a invalid identifiers. So valid identifiers mean it starts with a capital G. Yes, we can start it. it uh, the underscore is permitted. Yes, it, it is a valid identifier. And it also starts with the underscore. So invalid, no hyphen is included. It cannot start with the number. Now here break is the keyword. So it is also one type of the invalid identifier. And no decimal is included. So these question comes in a paper also. Find out the valid or invalid identifier. They have given you some uh, points and you have to find out whether that identifier is a valid one or an invalid one. So if you know about the, all the rules of the identifier, then you can do easily. Then there is a literals. So what do you mean by a literals or a value so literals are nothing it is some a fixed constant value it means when the thing is a fixed and it is constant it means you cannot change that that is a literal now we in the pattern we have a different type of the literal the very first literal is the string literal now what do you mean by string the very first question is what do you mean by string now string is a what it is a collection of characters when all the characters combine together then that becomes a string for example if i am saying that computer science okay computer science means what 
computer science is a collection of characters c o m p and so on means different different characters are there and it combines just together then it becomes a string so now it can be a either of single line or a multi line name itself signify a single line string single line string must terminate in one line means only one line is permitted there and that is a single line and this see this example so this is example of one single line string means this is a one single line and string is always in enclosed in this double quotes if it is not in double quote it is not a type of string or there may be a error will come then after that there is a multi line string multi line strings are across the multiple lines across the multiple lines means you can express the string within a different different lines so now there are two ways to express the multi line string these are the two ways now if you just write with the next line at the last of the first line you put the backslash and you just write the quotes over there other method is no need to write a backslash you just write the triple quotes at the starting and the end of the string this is also known as a doc string that is document string now obviously all these topic first and second chapter of the class 12 already have covered in a class 11 standard means all the 11th class syllabus now covered in two chapters that is a chapter 1 and chapter 2 so all of the thing these things we have covered in 11th class also now next is the escape sequence character now what do you mean by escape sequence characters now the escape these are some escape sequence character which are very much important and lot of these are used in next programming also this is a backslash this is a single quote this is the double quote and this is the new line character and this is the tag so these are some important escape sequence characters which are used further in our programming rest all are the also escape sequence character but they never use in our programming okay the next is a numeric literal now what do you mean by numeric literal in the numeric literal name itself signify numeric numeric means they are treated with a uh, integers values and literal we all know that is a constant so very first is the int so now int is what it is for basically it uh, takes the numbers or it takes the value which never contains a decimal okay why it is known as a sign integer because this contains the different positive and negative numbers with no decimal point so either it is a negative or a positive it may be anything obviously positive is also sign and negative is also sign that's why it is known as a sign integers now it can be written in a three form that one is the decimal form octal form and hexadecimal form so now these three things are already covered in a 11th class also in decimal forms the integers beginning with a digit 1 to 9 and octal form it has 0 to 8 And in hexadecimal, that is zero to sixteen. Zero to sixteen. How it write? Zero to nine, and then a to f. So don't indulge in these deep things because it is already we have covered in eleven, and that is not a part of the twelfth class. So don't worry about that. Then there is a floating point literal. Floating point literal means what? It contains the decimal point. means where there is a decimal point that comes under the floating point what is the exponent form the expression which contains e e raised to power 5 e raised to power 6 that is the exponent form now what is the complex form complex uh, uh, we have uh, uh, when you are in a 10th standard when you were in 10th standard you have already done the complex numbers real forms imaginary number so that is the part of the complex number where it becomes a real and imaginary like a plus iota b so that comes under the complex numbers after that there is a boolean literal boolean name itself signify it has only the two values that is one is the true and other is the false 
So when these two have a values, then that is known as a Boolean integral. This question is very much important and it always come in a one marks. Mostly it will come in a one mark. Special literal none. So what is the none? So question doesn't come like this. Uh, what is none? No. So question time, explain the special literal. So you have to tell the special literal named as a none and that is used to indicate the absence of value. It means when there is no value and there is one absence. So that it is known as a literal. And it can store the more store literal collections in the form of tuples and lists. So we will discuss a little bit later on what does the tuples and list. Now next after that there is a operators. So operators, what are the operators? So these are the different operators which are used here in my mm, previous video. I have just discussed all the operators in the details. So just wrap up that video only. So operators are the, here are arithmetic operators. So these are some operators which comes under the arithmetic. Bitwise, so these are the operators. So no, no doubt this question is very much important also. So just uh, go in a detail and refer that video only. Next is the punctuators. Now, what are the punctuators? So these are the symbols used in programming language to organize sentence structure. When you want to connect the uh, sentence, then that is known as a sentence structure. Okay, so this is all about the punctuators. When I want to uh, organize my programming in a proper sentence, at that time we need a punctuators. Okay. Next is the bare bones of the Python program. So now what do you mean by the bare bones of the Python program? Bare bones means basically that is the uh, basically the structure, structure of the Python program, which it just tells what the thing we have to cover in this. So this is known as a bare bone. So I just tell the thing. Uh, So in this, this is firstly, this is the comment. Comment means when we want to use this for the only documentation part. At that time, you need a this type of comment. After that, this is a function. After that, this is a function. Function means what? It means you have to describe the thing at a very early stage. It means you are defining this. This is a def, what it means, it is a definition. It means a definition. And when you start a function, you have to firstly put a colon after the function. Okay, so this is the main program. Now from here, only the main program code starts. So these are the statements. And sometimes it's it is known as expression also. Now, what do you why it is known as expression? Because here the operators, these are the operators, and these are the operands. So operands and operators are combined together, and when it becomes combined together, it becomes the expression. And after that, it will come a block. Now, this is known as a if block, and this is known as a else block. So all these are the different one. And this is the inline comment. No doubt this is comment. This is also comment, but this is known as an inline comment. Why? Because this is inside the block. That's why it is known as an inline comment. And this space is known as what? Indentation. And after that, in the last, when I want to call this function, at that time, this is known as a function call. Hope you understand all this. If you feel any problem, uh, then I just tell you this thing again. Okay, then variables and 
assignments. Variables and assignments means what? Variables, the re variable represents the labeled storage location. Now, what do you mean by this? Labeled storage locations. Labeled storage locations means we are assigning one labeling. We are labeling the name and we just assign that location that this is the value which is accommodated in this variable. That's why it is known as a labeling storage location. Now, how I can just tell 16 is a value which is assigned to this variable. Okay, so this is only the, so how it can comes, okay. Okay, so the next is a dynamic, okay. I, okay, so the, this is a one variable, one value which is assigned to the, this variable. Next is the dynamic typing. So what is the dynamic typing now? Dynamic typing means when we overwrite any variable, so the type, we can change the type very easily. Suppose, firstly, I just put a value 10 in a variable x. We just print it. Now, now we know the 10 is what? This is a integer value. We know this thing. After that, I just overwrite the variable x and I put the Hello world means hello world is a string. We know this thing. So now we are overwriting this variable x from string to the int. Means we have int pehle tha, data type and now we are treating it as a string. So obviously it will disconnect the previous connection. Then only it can update the new one. This is known as a dynamic type. So before a head, we don't have a dynamic typing. We have only the static typing. So static typing, in the static name itself signify the data type cannot be changed. If it is fixed as an int, that is int only. We cannot change it. That is some restriction. So at that time, this will become a lot of disadvantage and it will create a lot of problem in the programming. So uh, Upward this, we have a dynamic typing, which just changed this thing, okay? So after that, there is a multiple assignment. Multiple assignments means assigning the same value to the multiple variables. So like 10 is a single value, we can assign to the multiple variable A, B, C. So this is what? So the next topic is? Assigning the multiple values to the multiple variable. Now, what is this? Now, it means multiple variables are here also. Multiple values are also. We are assigning 10 to the x, 20 to the y, and 30 to the z. We are putting this. So, this is known as a multiple assigning multiple values to the multiple variables. After that, there is a simple input and output. So what is the simple input and output? How you can take the value as an input and output? The thing is that how you can take the value. So when you want to take as any input, so what is the syntax? If you want to input the name, so this is the variable in which you want to hold the value. So this is always you have to write input. And this is the message which you want to display. So this is basically one syntax over there. The variable to behold the value, which is the variable. This is the input. And prompt to be displayed means what is the message which you want to display here. So this is the syntax of input. Okay. Okay. So the next is. Next is the output. So what do you mean by output? Output means what you want to print it. So what you want to print it, you just write print. And if you want to print only, then you have to write in a double quotes. If, if that is a string, if that is a number, no double quote. Okay. So if you want 
to take the value whatever the value is in the program you want to take it so no quotation is that if you want to write if you want to print as it is then only you just write it is in the double quote like this if you want to describe it as it is but if you want to take the value then you just write like this only bar that's it if you put the things in a quotation then at that time you just print it okay so this is all about the input output so the next question is write a program to input a number and print its cube so just see here num is equal to float input enter the number so firstly you just enter the number and when you find out the cube it means you have to put a cube means you are just putting a firstly you just enter the number then num cube means you are multiplying it as a three times and after that you simply print it so this is a one type of program this is a simple program in fact what you have to do okay the next one is okay next is there is a program to input a number and print it square root now this is again one more program so firstly you have to write the input statement input a number then after that num into into 0.5 when you want to find square out square out as like this so what is this this is 1 by 2 if i am saying this square root of 4 what you i will write 4 1 by 2 so you just write like this 4 One by two, one by two. What check? What is it? That is point five. That's why they are written as here point five. Okay, so this is the reason why they are written as a point five. Next is the data type. So data types are what when you store the data into a, your variable. So what type of the data they hold? Either it is integer or a float or a complex or a boolean or in what sense they are storing so that is the data type so python offers here the built in code data type that is numbers strings list tuples and dictionary so one by one we'll start with it so very first is the numbers so integers the very first is the integers here so integer sign i have already told you in a beginning integer signs mean, means it contains a positive as well as negative number and it cannot take a decimal number that is a integer boolean is a number that contains the false and true only that is the boolean floating point floating points means which contains a decimal precision bachche kya hota hai that is the decimal ki points ke baad kitni values honi chahiye that is a 15 digit precision it can handle that then after that there is a complex number we have already discussed that is the um real plus imaginary points in that we have created a this thing okay so after that we have a data type for strings now in the data type Post. So these are. This is basically the summary what we have read right now in integer, boolean, floating, complex. So you can read here for for the remembrance part also. Okay. Next is the data type for strings. All the strings are sequence of pure unique unique uh, code characters. It is a system designed to represent every character from every language. And now just see this. So you cannot read like this. ये हम नहीं पढ़ सकते वाई बिकॉज दिस इज फ्रॉम द अनदर लैंग्वेज सो अ पाइथन स्ट्रिंग इज सीक्वेंस ऑफ कैरेक्टर इन ईच कैरेक्टर इच कैन बी विद द इंडेक्स ओनली सो दिस इज इन अ डिफरेंट यूनिकोड सो दिस इज अ डिफरेंट यूनिकोड सो बट वी कैन असेस इट विद द हेल्प ऑफ इंडेक्स सो वी नो द इंडेक्स हाउ ओके आई जस्ट टेल यू इन दिस सो दिस इज एट जीरो इंडेक्स this is at one index 
this is at two index. This is at three third index. And this is at four. This is known as a forward indexing. And when I moves from the backward, then it always starts with the minus one. This is minus one. This is minus two and so on. This is known as a backward index indexing and this is known as a forward indexing. Now in the list, what it does? List always start with this bracket. There is a one difference between list, tuple and dictionary. List always starts with the square brackets. Tuples always start and end with this round bracket and dictionaries always start and end with the curly bracket. Now list and dictionaries are the mutable one and tuples are the immutable one. Now, now the question comes, what is the difference between mutable and immutable? So, so this question is also important. Mutable is one which one can change means we can add also, we can delete also. That is a mutable. Immutable is what? That is non-changeable. We cannot change the values of the mutable and a non-mutable. Okay. So this we cannot change it. So uh, this is thing uh, which comes under the mutable and non-mutable. Now, next is the dictionaries. In the dictionary, what it is also an unordered set means it has a key value pair. Mean why this is on unordered set? Because every key, this first one is known as a key and the second one is known as a value. And this whole is known as a key value pair. This is unordered set. Why? Because every key have a different value. That's why it is known as a unordered set. Okay, so this is one diagram of uh, again this data type what we have uh, done and what we have done right now that is a mutable and immutable. Again, I am saying mutable are the one which can easily be changed and immutable are the one which cannot the change. So these are the examples of mutable which we have discussed integers, floating, boolean, string, tuple. So these are some examples of mutable and after that uh, uh, there is a mutable type so you can uh, these are unmutable unmutable means which cannot be changed okay after that there is a topic expressions now expressions is what expressions it means if i am just right 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 it means Two is a operand and three is the operand plus is the operator. When I combine operand and operators together, then it becomes the expression. For example, just see this. Now in this five and two and five is the operand plus is the operator here. When all the arithmetic operators combines together, then it becomes arithmetic expression. When the relationals operators combine together, it becomes a relational expression. When the logical operators combines together, it becomes logical. And when the string operators combine, then that becomes a string expression. Now the question is, you have to know about that, all the operators. If you don't know operators, you cannot do these things easily. After that, you have to tell how these evaluating arith arithmetic expressions. So you have to evaluate according to the question what they have give. Like if you don't know this presentence, so you cannot do the evaluation. So uh, for this thing, you need to learn this operator and presentence operator, which I already covered in 11th also. Like just see this example 1.1. Now a comma b is equal to 3 comma 6. C is equal to b by a. Now b by a, what do you mean by this? So in this, B means 6 by 3. 6 by 3, we know this is 2. But we know this is a divide operator. And divide always gives answer in a floating point. So you cannot write it as a 2. You can write, you cannot write it as a 2. You just write it as a 2.0. In this way, you just see this. 
B percent. So we know this is a remainder operator. If I just write six percentage three, so three from six से जब divide करेंगे तो three to the six so remainder is again zero. So we just write zero dot zero. Why dot zero? Because this is one of float and this float. When float is divided by the in the you can you just always take a bigger data type. Answer is always in the bigger type. You cannot write the data type as the small one. After that, you have a evaluating relational expression. So, how you can express this evaluation of relational exp expression? Now, Python cannot understand these two operators parallelly. At this time, you just write these two operators separately with the logical operator in between. Because we know in the end, if the first value is one and second value is one, the answer is always one. or you can say if the first value is true or the second value is true the third value is always true so you just write here and rather than or okay in this way you have to evaluate this expression okay just see how this expression solve now 5 is less than 10 yes it is true okay i just write a here for the end i am not writing fully 10 is less than 5 Yes, it is true. Okay, I just write here only. Okay, five is less than ten, so it is true. Ten is less than five. Yes, it is true. Three is less than ten. Eighteen. Yes, it is true. Eight is less than eighteen. Yes, it is true. But not of true is false. Okay, why I write false here? Because eight is no doubt less than eighteen. It's okay, true, but not of true is false. So five is less than two. Now true and false. Answer क्या आ जाएगा इसका? False. इसका answer आ गया false. अब बीच में or as it is है. हमने or as it is अभी लिख दिया. False or true. And हमारे पास क्या बन गया अभी तक? Equation and false. ये equation बन गई. Okay. False और true क्या होता है? True. Okay. True and false. अब true ये तो as it is आ जाएगा नीचे. Yes. True and false क्या होता है? False. तो so answer क्या आ गया हमारे पास? False. So if you don't know these logical operators, you cannot solve these things. so for these things you have to learn the all logical operators okay after that there is a topic type casting so what is the type casting so in the type casting you just forcefully convert one data type to the another data type so this is the syntax here so now here just see b is equal to 5.0 So when I want to convert this floating point data type into the integer data type, so I just write int b. So this what it will become? The it will become a integer. Now this is a forcefully converting the one data type to the another data type. So this is a one. Okay. So the next is the math library function. So these are some math library functions you have to. learn this sometimes the simple syntax will come like seal square root exponent fab so these are the some uh, math library functions so you have to learn only the syntax of this seal ka bachche kya hota hai meaning seal agar hum bole hum upar theek hai so agar hum seal 1.03 ka lenge to hum usse upar wali value it gives 2 theek hai isi uh, on the contrary of this there is one part floor फ्लोर में बच्चे क्या होता है नीचे वाला पार्ट अगर मैं बोलू 1.03 का फ्लोर क्या है तो वन आएगा आंसर ओके एंड 1.03 का सील क्या है तो टू सील होता है ऊपर फ्लोर होता है नीचे सो स्केयर रूट एक्सप्रेंस सो यू नो ऑल दिस थिंग सो दीज आर सम मैथमेटिकल लाइब्रेरी फंक्शन यू हैव टू लर्न ओनली दीज सिंटेक्स ऑफ द दीज थिंग Okay. After that, there is a one topic: statements flow control. Now, what is this statement flow control? It means when you want to 
put a code into any you want to do a programming you have to follow these three things either the loop is in the sequence or it is in selection or it is in iteration now what do you mean by sequence sequence means you have to follow a line by line only selection means you have to select either this is true or that is true and iteration means you just repeat the things again and again okay according obviously everything is according for the condition only if the condition is true you just repeat it again and again and if the condition becomes false you just stop that so according to the criteria we have to find out these all type of control structures now what do you mean by this thing a compound statement a compound statement represents a group of statements executed as a unit means when the group of statements are written over there and we just execute that it as a unit so at that time it is known as a compound statement so after that there is a now this is a compound statement just see here so many statements are written over there and we just combine it together so at this time this is compound simple statement when there is only one statement and we just simple execute that that is a simple statement empty statement means when there is a no statement at all there is only the pass statement is only there there is nothing else than that at that time there is a empty statement and these type of statements never come in a paper and you have to Uh, indulge these topics in your programming language only. Otherwise, uh, no theoretical part is to be there. After that, there is a if condition. Now, these uh, uh, logical structures are more important. Now, first is a if condition. Now, what does if condition tells? If this condition is true, then you have to move into the body. But if the condition is false, you just exit from here. So, what does the syntax of this if condition? Now, you put here a colon. After every condition, you have to put a here colon. Then statement and statement means you have to put a multiple statements over this. After that, there is a if else condition statement. If in if else condition statement, what now if the thing is true, then only this block will execute. If the condition becomes false, this block will execute. So again, there is a colon. If you don't put colon, there becomes a Error will introduce into your part. Now then, there is a LF condition. In a LF condition, you have a multiple conditions over there. One condition is there. Then again, you just put a condition. Means if this condition becomes false, you just move to the else part. And in else again, there is a one condition. You have to check that. And if it is a false, then you move to the further part. So it means there are multiple conditions in that, and if that condition fails, you just go to the else part. So these are some programs which you have to do it. If you will not do the practice, then obviously it will be a difficult for you. Now just see this thing: how to input a range of zero to triple nine and print if it is a one, two, or three-digit number. So okay, firstly we just input the number. Firstly, I just check it if it is less than zero. So I just print invalid entry. Now again, I put a condition. Now I just go to the else part and put a one more condition. If it is less than ten, so again condition. Then again condition. If it is less than hundred, if it is no, then move to else and again condition. Now if all these condition becomes false, it will move to the else part only. At that time, it will stop and give the output okay so after that there is a nested if condition nested if statement what it tells me in a nested if statement also what it there are multiple conditions over there nested means kya hota hai beta with in means if i am using if means if within if so firstly i just write if in a bigger outer loop in between also there is a one statement if so this is one block this is within after that this is a condition within again if means if within the if body so it, 
uh, nested if has an if has an another body if in its if body or in else if body there is another else body means in if there is one more if in lf there is one more if in else there is one more if so within each and every one there is one more if then that is known as a nested if after that there is a storing condition storing condition is nothing else when you uh, just store the different conditions in a one equation and you just named it then that is becomes a store condition now just see here a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 c is equal to. so obviously this is a condition why because this is double equal to single equal to is assignment operator and double equal to is a comparison operator means you are just combining can giving a condition so if these are condition you put it in a one variable that is all and now you are using this all only okay so in this way you can store the conditions also after that there is a looping statement so looping statement is what there are two loops for loop and while loop now what is the for loop in the for loop this is the basically syntax in the for loop what it tells you have to write the variables in a sequence and then what to repeat now just see this question for element in this now in means these elements are in our loop so this is membership operator in and not in so these are the yeah, print element plus 2 ab 10 hai humne pehla 10 liya plus 2 kiya 12 print ho gaya 15 tha plus 2 kiya 17 and so on so in this way they can just start with the for loop next is the okay one thing more in the for loop we have a different uh things the uh, two there are two ranges so one range is inclusive and so second range is exclusive the first range is always inclusive like 5 to 12 so 5 se hi start hua but 12 is always exclusive aap dhyan se dekho bacche 11 pe khatam ho gaya so whatever the range is written it always minus 1 jitni bhi range given hogi it will work only with the range minus 1 so this is so first hamara kya hota hai starting point second kya hota hai ending point and third kya hota hai step value step value beta kya hoti hai dekho 5 starting hai 5 likh diya yani ki 2 2 aapne isme step aage badhate jane hain 5 mein 2 kiya 7 7 mein 2 kiya 9 9 mein 2 kiya 11 11 mein ki kya kiya 2 13 but humne to 13 yahan likha it means we just move to the towards the 12 only to hum 13 yahan nahi so in this way you can do this thing uh um, you can just check the index values after that near is a while loop in a while loop this is the syntax while ka matlab bachche kya hota hai jab tak hamari condition true hai you can just do this thing so in this what it does you while count is greater than 0 then ki jab tak count ki value zero se badi hai tab tak you just do this thing only what a question demands it multiplies two integer without using this operator using the repeated addition so multiply nahi karna aapne aapne use karna hai repeated addition means you are just doing this thing again and again until unless the answer will come so it comes while loop while ka meaning kya ho gaya jab tak when this condition becomes false only then you just stop that otherwise you just continue it again and again after that there is a jump statement that is a break and continue there are two jump statement break and continue break bachche kya karta hai it skips the rest of the loop break name se pata lag raha hai beta when there is a break comes into the program you just skip the rest of the loops and jumped over the statement following the jahan wo jump karne ko bolega you just jump over that you break all the statements and what does continue demands continue bachche kya kehta hai until break statement continue statement forces to the next time continue agar aap force karega you have to do this thing either it is true or false you no worries about that but break jahan bhi aa gaya aap us loop se bahar aa jao 
जहां कॉन्टिन्यू आ गया आइदर इट इज ट्रू और नॉट आपने ये काम फिर से करना ही करना है सो दिस इज टू ब्रेक एंड कॉन्टिन्यू स्टेटमेंट सो दीज आर जम कंट्रोल स्टेटमेंट नेक्स्ट इज अ मोर ऑन लू लूप एल स्टेटमेंट लूप एल स्टेटमेंट बच्चे क्या होती हैं कि वेन यू जस्ट यूज एनी लूप आई दर इट इज अ फोर लूप और अ वाई लूप यू जस्ट राइट द एल स्टेटमेंट ऑल्सो विद दैम सो दैट इज नोन एज अ लूप एल्स स्टेटमेंट लाइक जस्ट सी ये हमने फोर की कंडीशन लिख दी एंड इन लास्ट वी जस्ट राइट द एल्स कंडीशन सो दिस इज अ लूप एल्स लूप हम कोई भी यूज कर सकते हैं आई दर इट इज अ फोर or it is a while but in last you just write the else statement nothing else like just see here they are writing a one program in this they just start uh, move to the 1 to 3 and they check if the either remainder is zero so break kar diya if it is not there so wo kahan chala jayega bachche else part mein so else mein kya kar dega ending loop usne kya kar diya us loop ko end kar diya okay so uh, the after that there is a nested loop in a nested loop what it does in a nested loop the loop already i told you a loop within the loop is known as a nested loop so just see here for ke beech mein humne kya lagaya hai for it means jab i ki value 1 se 6 hai to j ki value automatic change hogi and jab i ki value 1 hai j ki value 1 hogi वन से लेकर आय तक यानी कि वन से लेकर वन तक चलेगी जब आय की वैल्यू टू होगी तो जे की वैल्यू कहाँ से चलेगी वन से लेकर टू तक वेन आय की वैल्यू थ्री होगी तो जे की वैल्यू क्या चलेगी वन से लेकर थ्री मीन्स जैसे जैसे आय की वैल्यू बढ़ती जाएगी हमारी जे की वैल्यू यहाँ चेंज होती जाएगी ओके सो दिस इज नोन एज अ लूप नेस्टेड लूप ओके so uh, so this is all about the chapter and uh, hope you understand all the concepts in the next video we'll discuss the next chapter